So the project that we're doing now is um, something I call Black Ice, and it's this um, really kind of cool effect, hard to capture on uh, the video. I do have some still photos um, that I'll be sharing that will kind of help see it. But um, I've done this on several with several different stamp sets and even different uh, foil colors. Um, but I'm going to start with just showing the basics of how to put the card together. So obviously it's just a ba basic black card base. And I use the direct to paper technique to actually streak on the um, uh, archival black onto the basic gray. But it's, it's really very simple. So I'm just using this edge of the, the black ink pad, the one that's closer rather than farther from the end, and just going to hold my paper down and just gently rub it against. And I like how it catches that little bit of black at the top, that's a little bit darker. So that's why um, I'm gonna go from both sides so that I end up getting that little bit of black caught at the top and I kinda like a little bit more up there. So that's super simple and straightforward. And then of course just attach it to the card base. Um, and then once your vocal piece is done, this is the basic assembly. So the layers are just stacked one on top of each other. And there are some variations in the, this piece, this color, the white, um, depending on which package you get or choose. Um, there will be gold and copper to choose from, and each of those has a different uh, color that goes in behind here. The section down here is left open so you can uh, take your black piece of ribbon You'll put glue dots on the end, and then you're just going to attach it around the back side. So, um, uh, and then on the back side, I have dimensionals on there. So I have left the sides uh, free without dimensionals so that it doesn't get in the way when I put the ribbon on. So that's really your basic assembly, so straightforward. Um, now on to the fun, which is actually doing the technique. Um, and I've had so much fun with this. I'll show you some examples at the end with all the different variations and versions that I've done. Um, so one thing I need is a piece of scrap paper. And I'm going to also take a little bit of adhesive and put it on the back side of my foil. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I like to not touch the surface of the foil sheet with my fingertips. Notice I'm holding it here. That's what reminded me. <laughs> because your fingers have um, uh, oils on them. So uh, you don't want to necessarily get fingerprints on your surface uh, unless you're intentionally doing some design that you want fingerprints that are embossed, which I think is kind of a cool idea, actually. Uh, but that's a story for another day. So I'm going to start again with my black archival ink pad. And you do have to use the black archival because it's the only thing that will actually stick to the silver foil because it's a non-porous surface. Um, and I'm just going to, again, using that edge, I'm just going to do the direct-to-paper technique and just rub it against. Now I caught a bunch of black on the edge. Um, you may want to press not quite as hard uh, to try to get more of a subtle edge. Um, obviously now I, I want to get more of a sort of generally consistent edge. But on some of them, if you get a lot of edge, like even with someone like this, um, if you have too much edge, it sort of interrupts the, the image, you know, it sort of gets in the way of really seeing the image. So. Um, that's just one thing to keep in mind. So I'm going to now turn it over, and just like I did with the basic gray piece, again, avoiding putting my fingers on the surface, um, I'm going to press it down so the adhesive holds it down. Now, if it's not held down, what will happen when you streak, or if you're, you don't have adhesive to hold it down, or your hand, or both, is the paper will shift, and you'll end up getting like a curvy line instead of a straight line. And, you know, my goal here is to have the straight line. So, um, again, so I'm going to just do extra... Uh, light with how I'm, I'm really not putting much weight on there at all. Uh, so I'm just going to catch it on. Oh, gosh, I got it. There's like a lot on there. <laughs> okay, well, that was more than I intended. Um, so I really want to be able to also run it along. So I'm going to get some of the streaks down the middle as well. Okay, so just like with everything we do in paper crafting and stamping, they're each going to be a little different. So um, that's a little bit more black than I want, but I kind of want it to be a little bit more even on the other side. So I'm going to take the risk and actually do a little bit more on the left to get it a little more evened out. Yeah, it's close. It's okay. It's going to be its own unique little creation, right? The one I want to use on this one is uh, the Epic Celebrations. 
Um, it actually, I'm going to use the, the guitar, but I've done some that also used the sneaker um, and some that used all three, in fact. So we're using the You're Awesome and the guitar sentiment, I'm sorry, the, the guitar in this um, for the stamping. Again, I'm going to use the archival black and I'm going to start with stamping the You're Awesome in the lower right hand corner of the paper. You want to make sure that you don't let it slide, so press firmly, but not too so firmly that it moves. So you get a nice crisp image there. And then I'm going to just do a series of guitar images. And I'm envisioning like a wall with guitars, you know. My husband plays the guitar, so. For this next segment, I've speeded it up to do my stamping uh, of the guitars. And then I'm going to quickly take my heat tool and dry the whole surface so that all the black ink is dry for the next step. So. If I don't dry it, I'll show you what happens in, on another sample, but I'm using my um, Stampin' Up! heat tool, and this new heat tool actually has a, has a dual setting, so one's like for drying, and the other one is actually for heating when you're using embossing powder. So I'm going to use the drying one, it's first setting. And then I'm going to do the same step but with the Versamark, as I did before, the direct-to-paper technique. So now with this step, especially with the Versamark, if you really want to try to get that icy look of the streaks, you know, almost like droplets without it being uniform, you need the ever so lightest touch of the Versamark pad. Like you're almost just using the weight of the pad itself to rub against the paper and no more. So you're not pressing at all. So I'm going to hold down the paper again and just, I'm, I'm actually literally just going to hold it and let it run down in straight lines. So when I did it, I also was to the right of the scrap paper. I didn't straddle the scrap paper because that will give you a distinct straight line and you don't really want that. So now I'm going to go to the other side and hold it down and do the same thing. And I also want to make sure that I don't leave a gap in the middle. You want to try to get a little bit of Versamark over the whole surface. So now I'm going to grab my clear embossing powder. Again, trying to avoid touching that surface. Put the clear embossing powder over the whole thing. And then I'm going to heat it on the full heat setting. And you just want to make sure, of course, that it's all heated and melted. So here's a finished card made with that focal piece and a couple of close-ups so you can really see a bit of the black ice effect that we're trying to go for. This final example is made with the Heartfelt Blooms stamp set, and it's really my favorite example of the black ice technique. I'll show you the full card at the end of the video. So I have one last little tip for you. Uh, this card was sort of an experiment. I wanted to see what would happen if I didn't dry the black ink before I went over it with the Versamark. So what you can see here is that image, the, the ink actually sort of got pulled down um, by the Versamark when I went over it, so it's a little bit blurry there. So if you like that look, go for it. It looks kind of cool, I think. Um, but if you want to have a crisper image, uh, definitely dry your black ink before you apply the Versamark. So here are some additional examples of focal pieces for this card. This first one is the amazing U stamp set, and here's a close-up. The second one is um, made with the Epic Celebration stamp set. Now here's the final card for the Heartfelt Bloom stamp set, and I can't resist but show that focal uh, close-up again, because I love it. And last but not least, this is made with the Waterfront stamp set, which is in the Occasions catalog, and a close-up. I hope you've enjoyed the technique and project today. To learn how you can get project kits for free, project documents especially prepared for you, plus hostess rewards, check out my online and in-person stamp clubs. It's simple, not a large commitment of time or money, but it comes with great perks and benefits. Check out the details in the description below this video. Have a great day and happy crafting.